and welcome back to CGTV. More specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a very gloomy day here with my Brabus G500 4x4 squared. Today, we are going to go and have a little look around at some cars ahead of the next upcoming Historics auction. And I've got a very interesting question to pose because I've had this car for only a few months now. However, something has come up in Historics auctions that would be a viable swap for this car. Another car, another G-Wagon, but an even rarer, even quirkier, and arguably more desirable version. Certainly more desirable if you ask my other half. This is a dream car for Ianthi. It's better than anything that I've got for her before, and it's something that she is absolutely obsessed with, and she rarely takes any interest in cars whatsoever. She usually thinks whatever I want is pathetic. So we will go and see that, and I'm gonna discuss things value-wise when it comes to the iconic G-Class. My 4x4 squared is here. Um, I had promised that I would have done something with it by now, de-wrapped it, uh, but I've been uh, gallivanting all over the world and it's just not been viable. Just got back from Vegas and um, yeah, just not viable to have done anything with it. Yeah, it's been good as gold and frankly, I'm actually quite looking forward to winter with this car. So it's all to come on the channel. I'm going to get it kind of serviced and a little bit of work done to it but at the moment I actually am really really enjoying just batting around in it. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to go and check out a potential replacement for it inside but if it doesn't happen I'm actually quite happy because this thing is marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. I did um, I did try black and silver plates uh, but I got told off so the normal ones are back on it. A load of Karens were telling me off about it. So Mercedes-Benz World then here in Brooklyn. Many of you will be familiar with it. It's in Surrey, uh, iconic location. So we can head in because there's some amazing metal inside. Here we go then. Here we go, here we go. This is not my first time here with Historics Auctions. Um, so the auction will be taking place up there, but we've got some lots on the ground floor to view ahead of that. So. We've actually got two of these here. This is a left-hand drive 190 SL. And for those unfamiliar with these videos by now, I'm sure you are familiar. If you go on the Historics website and type in 195 into the catalog online, it will bring up all the details on each lot. So it's nice and simple. And each car will have that in the corner there. So you've got a 190 SL there, black and cream, lovely specification. You've also got another left-hand drive. SL here, it's all sort of the biscuit tan over grey, and that's lot number 166, another 190 SL. They are so, so good. So you've got a choice of two cars here with differing mileages and specifications, but there is no wrong answer when it comes to these two. Absolutely amazing. One of my favourite things is the gauges and wheel in here for me that just really, really does it, and even attention to details, like on the gear stick there. So, so cool. We've got a Pagoda there as well. We've got a left-hand drive Pagoda manual. That is lot number 171. Pagoda is something that I'd like in the garage at some point, uh, but just hasn't got prioritised just yet. Manual car, though. Left-hand drive, black leather interior. Now, this is brilliant. This is being offered with no reserve on it. Almost a hyper barge, if you like. That's lot number 256. What I love about these is this pillarless side here. Automatic, obviously, right-hand drive, CL55. That is absolutely enormous. That is wonderful. So much presence. And as I say, that whole side opening there is brilliant. You've got sunroof as well. And we've got a real treat here. This is the C111 development car. This is the 1969 car. It's actually powered by a Wankel engine no smirking. It's actually powered by rotors in the Wankel engine, which is very, very cool. But what was revolutionary about this car is, is how lightweight it was and the fact that it was made out of reinforced glass fiber. Really, really ahead of its time. And as you can see there, it's also got the gold wings. Only 280 brake horsepower in this original variant. It was then updated with an extra rotor in it, so a four rotor Wankel engine, I believe, up to about 350 brake horsepower. And then it was latterly released down the line again in a different version, I think it was the V that had a uh, turbocharged V8 in it, but this was the original variant, and that is available here to see at Mercedes Benz World Brooklyn's. But it's just so, so cool. And I think this 
arguably is one of the most collectible Mercedes of all times. You can keep your 300 SLs. I think this is one of the most collectible cars ever to wear a Mercedes badge. Very, very rarely seen. And actually the top speed on this thing at the time was seen as absolutely bonkers, but it was only in today's terms, 168 miles an hour 168 miles an hour is still obviously the same speed in today's <laughs> measurements but back in those days 1969 that was incredibly incredibly fast so really cool and the latest version of this that they brought out the v with the turbo engine in it was the actually set speed record so a very very well respected car of its day and to think that is now 50 something years old design wise very hard to believe because it does look relatively modern that could be 80s really could anyway let's head up then and see what else they've got one of the coolest things about this place is this exploded f1 car all the bits itemized and suspended on cables you really got to come and see it it's absolutely bonkers and to think that hamilton's 2013 car just sold at auction for around 14 and a half million pounds that is one expensive sculpture absolutely nuts and it's really strange to think that all of these parts together only weigh about 750 kilos and this particular structure actually is 600 kilos but the weight of an f1 car at the start of a race is about 750. Yeah. right across the gangway then we have got some of the cars we're just setting up so you'll see people milling around and sorting things out um, ahead of the auction we are well ahead of this weekend's auction which is on saturday so where to start i will not be able to cover every single car because otherwise we'll be here all day long there's about 150 <clears throat> there's always about 150 plus lots and this is where vicky butler henderson who is around somewhere actually point the camera in her face in a minute if we find her she'll be out there banging the gavel up there and you'll see some footage from last time's auction at Bista Heritage up there. There's full auction previews if you're sick of me featuring Vicky and Matthew as well on the Historics Auctions YouTube channel so um, a lot more in depth on there. Right so we'll kick things off then with something a little bit JDM. Lot number 145 is this Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6 Tommy Mackinnon edition. This is number 29 uk car supplied number 29 the engine's been fully rebuilt the mot actually expires august 2024 so it's good to go good to jump in and good to go hooning almost entirely looks pretty much standard which is very very rare for these cars usually they get absolutely messed around with and ruined but this is in collector's spec really and i absolutely adore these there is a jdm shaped hole in my garage but not just yet that's lot number 145 this car here then very quickly lot number 178 you'll actually recognize it potentially from the bista heritage auction the winning bidder couldn't get the funds together so that means that it's coming up for auction once again it's a right hand drive 930 turbo a car that needs no introduction whatsoever and is an absolute minter this thing i went through all the details in the last one but it's low mileage having only done 70,000 miles and it's been fully fully redone engine rebuild the whole lot that is good to go a black 930 turbo something that cannot be argued with coming through then we have a selection of e-types got another one there as well Wonderful stuff, yellow roadster. Coming through, there is, oh my goodness. I have a soft, I have a soft spot for Phantoms. Oh, we've got Matthew Pretty here, filming away. Oh, we've also got an M3 CSL. That is lot number 220. I'll get away from them. We've got Cosworth here, wow. Three door whale tail, look at those wheels. Good events. Sierra RS Cosworth. That is unreal. Pretty much standard guys inside as well. Pretty rare that. That is lot number 230. And we've also got another three door icon here Subaru Impreza P1. These things are absolutely lethal. They are so fast. And that again is in fully standard format. I have a feeling that's going to fetch an awful lot of money. Wow, 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 wow. That is a very, very, very rare find in that sort of condition. Wowzers, that's lot number 247. Right, I'm gonna leave them alone and head over here. Got a selection of motorbikes. If you're on motorbike people, make sure you hit the Historics 
catalogue online. Go and check those out. On the other side then, we have got a veritable smorgasbord of pretty much every single generation and type of car you can imagine, as is always the case with historics. So we've got classic mini there. But something that's caught my attention is this FF, lot number 193, Grigio paint with tan interior. That is excellent. Full carbon inside, absolutely everything in there is carbon. That is Koyo as well, that is very, very nice. Wow. Wowzers, wowzers. We like that a lot. You've got the diamond cut wheels as well without tacky colored calipers. It's lovely. And yeah. these are stonking value for money. Really, really cool pieces of kit. And obviously the last time that Pininfarina designed uh, Ferrari's bread van, if you like. And that's obviously changed to the Lusso, which is an in-house design. And this doesn't actually have privacy glass either. Very classy spec, very, very nice. We've got another Pagoda here. Another Pagoda there and another E-Type. So if you're after an E-Type or a Pagoda, you've got uh, a number of options at this next auction. So both absolute stunners and sure to rise over the coming years. So my Brabus is not the only one here at Mercedes-Benz. Well, this is, believe it or not, a Brabus SV12 by Turbo Roadster. So ordinarily this thing would come with a five and a half litre engine in it, but actually what Brabus have done, they enlarge the engine to 6.3 litres with a twin turbo as well. That means power was uprated to 630 odd brake horsepower with over a thousand newton meters of torque. Brabus have done various aesthetic touches on it, including fitting these stonking, stonking split wheels. A few bits of carbon fiber inside with some upgrades. You can see the Brabus badge there. Carbon, carbon fiber around the steering wheel. Brabus badging on the side and uh, increased aggression at the front there with that front splitter. But this car has only covered 30 odd thousand miles and the estimate on it is around 50 grand. That is one hell of a car and it's thought that Brabus only made around 20 of these in total and I suspect you could probably count on a couple of fingers how many right hand drive versions of these cars they made. That is stonking. Full service history, absolutely comprehensive and all the Brabus accoutrements as well. What a sleeper. That would be absolutely perfect for honking down to the south of France at 200 miles an hour. Wow. Coming through on the other side with a beautiful view of the track over there, I want to show you this. Lot number 218 is a Maserati Merak SS. Essentially a lighter, slightly smaller version of the Maserati Bora. It replaced the Maserati Bora's V8 with a V6. It's only covered 2,200 miles. It's been completely reconditioned and it is absolutely stunning. A very, very cool wedge shape as was very, very normal for the time and looking very, very cool in this day and age, finishing this stunning silver color. It literally presents as new. Flying buttress architecture there. So, so cool. Absolutely amazing. Manual gearbox has only covered, as I say, 2,200 miles and probably the only one of these I've ever seen. So on a slightly different note then, we've got something new and exciting to share with you. And these will be available to come and look at when you come to either the preview days or auction day as well. These are actually all available right now. And in particular, this bike over here has got a year long waiting list. Now, what are they? I hear you ask. These are actually electric motorbikes. They're all slightly different. This one in particular is an Italian bike. It's actually chain driven, liquid cooled. But this one and this one have got 140 newton meters of torque, which is the equivalent of a two litre motorbike. But the difference being is it's absolutely instant. It's electric, so it's literally no fuss, twist and go. No gearbox to speak of. I mean, this has got a uh, torque converter type arrangement, but they're absolutely incredible. They're sort of things you've really got to try to believe. And then the other thing as well, about having a motorbike that's electric, that really appeals to me is actually the fact that you can connect with the road a little bit better. You haven't got the massive engine kind of vibrating away. Everything you feel on these bikes is the road and no huge amounts of noise as well distracting you. Now this bike here is something that I absolutely adore. These two are road legal. This one is not. This is just a motocross bike. It's very, very high specification and they've done it really, really cleverly because all of these white parts here can be replaced for 120 quid 
This here, which is £22 to replace, really nice specification. You've got Brembo brakes, aluminium billeted hubs. You've also got forged carbon fibre here and real gold on there as well, believe it or not. Dashboard here is actually your phone. It plugs in and you can see all the revs and that. And you've actually got five drive modes as well changed on here. You can choose the amount of power this bike has, up to 80 brake horsepower. Your average or top end, shall I say, motocross bike usually only has 60 brake horsepower and you can pump this one all the way up to 80 brake horsepower, which is actually probably gonna be actually far too much. The rear wheel, I suspect, will spend most of its time spinning around. Huge amount of fun anyway. And actually, this down here is the charger. Really, really cool, and I actually would love to have a go on one of these. Fortunately for everyone, I'm not gonna jump on one and have a go around here. You've also got one of these here as well, which they also make in road legal variant. This one is non-road legal, but they actually have a road legal variant at one of these as well. As I say, the waiting list on one of these is a year, and they've actually got one in stock here now, and a few more coming before Christmas. That, if I had a plot of land, I'd absolutely love one of those. No gears either, just twist and hoon. Anyway, onto some cars then. I actually covered this one in my Historics Roundup video. This is a 1976 911 Targa, or at least it started that way, but it's actually been uh, resto modded by the amazing magicians at 911 Rensport. It's got a 3.2 litre, engine in it, obviously uprated over and above the standard engine in the 1976 Targa, and it's also got a G50 gearbox in it as well. It's been totally, totally resto modded. Absolutely everything's been redone. New paint, new metal, new interior, you name it. And if you wanted to build one of these yourself, it'd be about 200 grand. The estimate on this car is 130 to 150 thousand pounds which represents a massive saving over and above that is lot number 180 i very much enjoy that logo on the side there as a watch geek right here we go then the car that i really wanted to see and the car that i really 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 want to bid on i'm going to be in abu dhabi when the auction's on i'm going to abu dhabi for the formula one so hopefully i'll be able to catch the auction it starts at 9:30 in the morning it's lot number 219 and i probably shouldn't be even talking about it and hyping it up but this is a g500 cabriolet super super rare this being the v8 one of the last ones they did a 2007 model this is the one to have it's left-hand drive because they were all left-hand drive but obviously it's got that amazing cab back we've got the roof down here but there's very very big hints of lawn delay maybach lawn delay here with that open top back end. It's just so, so iconic. And these are serious collector's items. My 4x4 squared Brabus is a collector's item, but so is this. And I suspect this would be slightly easier to navigate around London. It's not quite as wide as the 4x4 squared. You'll see the arches are not absurd like they are on the 4x4 squared. And it's actually got a relatively sensible footprint on it. That is amazing. I adore these, absolutely adore these. It's not the 350 as some of them are, and that's a very, very user-friendly interior. One thing I would do, I'd upgrade that to CarPlay, but it's got automatic box in it as well. It's only covered 44,000 miles, and the only other G500 I can find online, final edition, is 250,000 pounds. Now they set the estimate at 90 to 110,000 pounds, but I suspect if there are more than a few people in the room that want one of these, it could climb much, much higher. Of course, I'm hoping it doesn't, and I suspect the reserve is set quite high as well, um, but that is a very, very collectible car. So let me know in the comments which you prefer, this or my 4x4 squared Brabus. Slightly different, oh, let's go around the back. Slightly different vibe, but they're interestingly both called G500s. And this, actually, this car actually has come from Spain, so the owner of this car had this particular vehicle at his second house in Spain. As you do, I mean, what a wafter for Spain. That is so, so cool. 
Anyway, that is a brief look at what is coming up at this weekend's auction. We've also got Vintage and Prestige here who have watches, collectible watches, and some actually some uh, war memorabilia and some really, really cool collectible stuff as well. We've got a Leica set of World War II binoculars over there. Really, really cool. Six grand's worth. So some very interesting kit here. It's at Mercedes-Benz World. Make sure you come and check out all of these lots across the next few days. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday are preview days. And of course, Saturday morning is the auction. Opens at 9.30. You do have to register to bid before you bid i've fallen foul of that before i thought i could just quickly whiz on and start bidding but you need to register you need to complete some kyc first so make sure you do that and don't uh try and bid in a rush and flap and ruin it like i did on an alpha zagato many moons ago if you remember that video for now then thank you very much for watching make sure you're following historics on all social media platforms and check out our podcast with vicky butler henderson mr matthew pretty i'll leave the link to that on my instagram and below. For now, ciao.